Sao Palmetto is a native palm from Florida. It's endemic to the U.S., mostly found native growing in Florida and also southwestern regions of Georgia. It's a very slow growth kind of rhizomatous palm, so it grows by rhizomes and usually it just gets to like five to six feet tall. It's kind of a small palm tree, but it's, it's, uh, the Latin name is Serenoa repens, and repens means creeping. So it actually, the palm tree, instead of growing up like you would think a normal palm tree, it kind of falls over and then goes up at the end. It has a very slow growth pattern, so it can actually grow 0.6 to 2 centimeters per year. So some of the plants are estimated to be centuries old. It's called saw palmetto because of the characteristics of the, its leaves. They call it saw palmetto because the edges are, are kind of sawtoothed acts like a saw, so if you get too close to the plant, it can actually damage <laughs> your clothes and harm you because the saw can get to you very quickly. The part that we use for medicine is the fruit, and uh, they have to be ripe because that really develops the fatty acids, which are a really important part of the medicine. You get these massive, massive groves of palm trees with sharp leaves, so it is challenging to pick them. From the harvest part of Sao Palmeiro, mostly of the harvest is doing in the wild. So the harvest is usually done between August to September. It's when the berries are usually on the orange to black stage. So for the harvest, most of the harvest is done by immigrant workers and they just go to these plants, which it's already like with a saw so it can cut you if you don't use like the right gloves and long sleeve and equipment. Moreover, Sao Palmeiro is well known to have rattlesnake, diamondbacks just laying around. Where I also have seen and touched some scorpions inside of the flowers because they kind of like to hide under the shafts of the flowers. So it's definitely not a pleasant job and can also be very dangerous. So Native Americans have been using saw palmetto as a plant in total. So they have used the leaves as a roof a shaft on top of their houses. They use also the patios to do baskets, the leaf shafts to do little dolls for as a, the seminal was a common practice, and also eating the fruits as they are. Well, they thought it was a kind of a tonic too. Uh, so they, they ate it, they put it in their food. It's got a lot of fatty acids in it, so I'd call it kind of a food medicine. The taste is not that great, frankly, but they used them for a variety of uh, ailments such as colds and flus and, and actually urinary tract infections. Um, benign prostatic hyperplasia is the a growth of prostatic tissue that occurs in almost all men. Most men, uh, by the time that they're 60, 70, 80, are going to have an enlarged prostate gland, inflamed prostate gland. So approximately 50% of men above the age of 50 have enlarged prostates, and almost 100% of men above the age of 80 have enlarged prostates. What's important to remember about uh, what we call BPH, um, is that it's a benign condition and it's not cancer. Well, our body converts testosterone into dihydrotestosterone, and this can be a lot more of a growth stimulant, so it can actually start getting our prostate gland uh, to start growing. As the prostate enlarges, it causes a sort of constriction to urinary flow. So when it comes to uh, BPH leading to lower urinary tract symptoms, or what we typically um, call it LUTs, the, the big categories are either irritative symptoms, such as urgency, frequency, rushing to the bathroom, um, or obstructive symptoms, which include things like hesitancy, intermittent stream, weak stream. So men develop a hesitancy when they're trying to avoid a slow intermittent stream, poor bladder emptying, nocturia, getting up at night to urinate, double voiding, in other words, feeling like your bladder doesn't fully empty. So these are common uh, symptoms that we describe as lower urinary tract symptoms. This is progressive, and it 
does resolve in many men with the use of the pharmaceutical products. However, these medications, particularly the alpha blockers, because the prostate continues to grow and the patient's symptoms may slowly return or progress such that they need an addition of another pharmaceutical agent or they may need surgery. There's been strong clinical evidence through multiple peer-reviewed publications on the role of medications. But medications are not without side effects. Some of these medications can cause lightheadedness, dizziness, sexual side effects. Some, can even ha some of them can even have permanent effect on mood or um, sexual dysfunction, uh, while others you know, do require you to take them forever. Many of my patients were not interested in taking a prescription pharmaceutical medication. And many of them wanted to stay away from surgery altogether. And they were looking for alternatives. So when it comes to BPAs, there's a multitude of options. Um, the options go all the way from the role of supplements, uh, the role of medications, uh, the role of office-based therapies, as well as surgical therapies to address BPH. And what we've seen as of late is that there's been a growth in the number of treatments available for, for BPH. So when we talk about the role of supplements, specifically saw palmetto, uh, for, the, for the longest time, we, we had um, not very good data supporting the use of supplements but I can tell you anecdotally, there's definitely patients that I see that tell me, hey, I've started this supplement and I've seen a dramatic improvement in you know, whatever symptom it might be, all the way from urgency, frequency, or even the quality of their stream. This was perplexing to me. It was perplexing to me because my patients told me, or many of them, that it was working for them, that they didn't need other medications, that it was keeping them from surgery. So what is going on? So I was involved as a principal investigator in one of the largest, most comprehensive saw palmetto trial in North America, which is called the CAMUS trial. It was funded by the National Institutes of Health. And after 18 months and hundreds of patients in the trial, the results were actually the saw palmetto that we were using was no better than the placebo we were using. You know, why would a large North American clinical trial fail when some European trials and some other North American trials showed that saw palmetto was effective and safe? When we delved into it a little bit more, we found out that a particular type of saw palmetto, permixin, which is a hexane extracted product available in Europe and elsewhere by prescription, was the most effective of all the saw palmettos. Now, when we start parsing out the data a little bit closer, and you start looking at not just US data, but international data, we start seeing that certain extracts for saw palmetto um, can actually have a pretty significant effect on lower urinary tract symptoms, while other compounds do not. The, the amount of fatty acids that's just in the, in the fruit itself is only about 10 or 12 percent, whereas some of these other modern products that are um, solvent extracted are up to 80 or 90 percent fatty acids. When it comes specifically to the um, extracting saw palmetto, we know that compounds that are extracted in hexane or a CO2 seem to have a better um, efficacy than those that are extracted in uh, either ethanol or whole berry. For me, I, th I think the best extraction is definitely the, the supercritical carbon dioxide extraction. And it's because it's such a clean technology. It's a very green technology. It's very, because what they do is they put carbon dioxide under, under great pressure and cool it down until it becomes a liquid. Then they use that liquid as the solvent to pull out all the sterols and fatty acids. And then they simply warm it up and then the carbon dioxide comes off of the material and, and then leaves behind a liquid, and then you can repurpose that carbon dioxide. So that's a very green uh, and sustainable type of extraction. 
uh, ultimately, I think it, it this plays a huge role in the fatty acid signature, and that fatty acid signature is what allows the abs likely the absorption of the salt palmetto to the prostate. It's really interesting that there are some clinical studies out there that compare the synthetic drugs like Proscar to uh, salt palmetto. Does it work? And in these clinical trials, they work about the same. In a number of studies, the salt palmetto extract was as effective as an alpha blocker such as tamsulosin, and was effective over the long term as one of the prescribed alpha reductase inhibitors, such as finasteride or avidart. So when it comes to salt palmetto, uh, I would say that in my practice I've had uh, patients who either have not been able to tolerate medications, and we started the salt palmetto, and after probably a couple of months they had significant improvement of symptoms, um, and not requiring uh, moving on to any minimally invasive therapy. The other big point is is that instead of the side effects, potential side effects of the Proscar, you're getting side benefits. So it's pretty cool that you can you know get the extract of the fatty acids and sterols, and those are those are constituents that our body needs for its nutrition and for its benefit. But you're also getting that wonderful anti-inflammatory effect and also the 5-alpha reductase effect as well, like Proscar does. Safety with salt palmetto has never been an issue as far as I'm concerned. I've never seen it in an, as an issue in my patients who are taking it. We did not see it as an issue in the large, randomized, placebo-controlled study uh, that we did in North America. USP um, has been um, independently verifying a variety of supplements um, available in the U.S. This, I think, allows consumers to find an independent body that verifies what's in the pill so that that allows consumers to have the confidence that what's written on the bottle is actually what's in the pill. So the only evidence we really have is that the fingerprint of fatty acid concentrations works and is safe. <laughs>